In this tutorial, I'm going to teach you how to create a new Node.js project using NPM. I'll teach you how NPM creates the project, what are the things that it does you can run using NPM. Let's check it out. So before you start, you want to make sure you have NPM installed. And uh, you do that by doing npm-v, and it should give you the version of npm that's installed on your machine. npm is something that comes with Node. If you've done a Node installation, a Node.js installation on your machine, you typically have npm associated with it. So you should see so you should see this to make sure that npm is at least in your path and it's installed correctly. After you've done this, pick some directory here. Uh, I'm going to pick. Uh, a name called time zone. I'm going to create a directory and go to that time zone directory. My goal here is to create a command line utility which converts your current time into a different time zone. So let's say you want to run this command line utility to say, okay, what's the time in a different part of the world? You should be able to do that and it should give you the time at various different parts of the world. Okay, that's the goal. So we're going to build this command line utility using NPM and this is how you create this new project using NPM. By default, there's nothing here. There's no files, nothing. It's like a clean slate. Now to create a new project using NPM, you run the command NPM init. Okay, so this is what tells NPM that it needs to start a new project. Now what this does is it asks you a bunch of questions and it'll help you walk through what you would typically need to do to set this up. Okay, so the first thing it's gonna ask you is what's the package name? What is the name of the project? Notice that it doesn't say project name, it says package name. This is interesting because when you do an NPM init, you're not creating a node project per se. What you're actually creating is a new NPM package. Okay, so you notice how when you do NPM to get other packages, you think of it as like, okay, I'm fetching the packages from the repository, right? It's a package dependency manager. It's fetching dependencies. Well, NPM is also useful in creating new artifacts and publishing them. It works both ways. It can both consume and it can produce new packages for the Node ecosystem, all right? So that's why it says package name here. So let's say my package name is time zone. I hit enter. So it's basically taking the default value. Version, again, notice the default value is in parentheses. It says 1.0.0. I'm fine with the default. Description, utility to convert time zones. Okay, this question, the entry point is interesting because what it's asking you to do is to provide it with one single JavaScript file, which is your entry into your project. So let's say you're building a command line utility. What is the JavaScript file, which is the entry point? What should you have to do when you do node blah.js? What is that file which is gonna start it all off? Okay, that's the question. And the typical best practice is to have that be index.js. I'm gonna to stick to the default and say that is what I want as the entry point. Test command. This is basically, what is the command that I need to run in order to test this project? I'm gonna leave this as blank. The Git repository where I'm gonna be checking this in, I don't have anything right now, so I'm gonna leave this as blank. Any keywords to facilitate searching, again, blank. The author, I'm just gonna give my name. And then the license for this, it could be MIT, it could be ISC, I'm just gonna leave the default here. And now here, it gives you the package.json that it plans to create. But before it does that, it says, are you okay with this? Okay, and here are all the values, a lot of which we just walked through. The name of this project is time zone, version is 1.0.0, here's the description we entered. The main, the entry point is index.js. Scripts, test, we left it as blank, so it's actually it actually says no test specified. I should have added npm test or some kind of a test command that I can map to actual test execution, but we're not gonna cover that for now. Um, author and license, is this okay? I'm gonna say yes, well yes is the default, so I'm gonna hit enter, and then look what it's done. It's actually created a package.json file over here. So if I were to look at the contents of package.json, it's basically what it just confirmed, okay? So this is metadata about your code, about your project about your possible potential package that you might publish to NPM. 
you don't have a single line of source but you have the metadata now okay now I can quit this and then let's say I want to let me actually open this in Visual Studio Code okay so here's my project open in Visual Studio Code if you can call it a project it's just one file which is package.json which we just saw now I'm going to create a JavaScript file here all right so I'm going to create a file and I'm going to call it index.js because I told npm that that's going to be my entry point. Right? I'm going to call this index.js and I'm going to do console.log hello world. Now there are a couple of things I can do to run this. You open up console. I can either do node index.js and it's going to run that file or the typical convention is to say when you have a bunch of files and you don't know what your starting point is, you kind of have defined it in main, but you also want some kind of a common command to run, okay? Imagine project A, you have to run it using node index.js. Project B, you have to run node app.js. That's something that, that's extra that you have to convey to whoever is running the project, all right? Let's say you want to abstract it all out. The convention is to map this to an alias called npm start okay so the way to do this is if you notice the scripts here this is basically you mapping a command to npm wouldn't it be nice if we were to say npm start and have it run right now it doesn't have it but let's say i want to make that happen okay the way to do this is to go here to the script section and add a start script i'm going to do start here and then i'm going to say this is node index js okay i'm creating a alias for npm now if i were to do this imagine what happens if i run npm start what it's going to do is it's going to say hey i got this i know what the starting point is somebody has already defined it and it is over here so you have this one unified command that you can use to run all your node.js projects okay this is a common convention a lot of people follow this so this is something that's handy as well. So right here, you're seeing the benefit of NPM, even without using third-party libraries. You have a consolidated metadata file, which lists all the details about your project. And then it also has these aliases, which let you run NPM commands, which can go and do things, okay? So this is typical bash script. So you can do all kinds of stuff here, and you can do anand, and then node, maybe there's another file you want to run them both, you can put this here. So whatever whatever is your application starting command for your application, you can put it there and then people don't have to think about it, they just run npm start. So these two scripts that you're seeing here, start and test, are special scripts. They're called lifecycle scripts, which have a special meaning with NPM. It is something that you would want to do for most projects. You'd want to start running the project. And test is also another standard script. You want to test the project. So these two have a special meaning and they have a special way of running it. You can say NPM start to run this start script and you can run NPM test to run the test script which is of course failing because we have specified exit one here and uh, we want it to fail because we don't have anything for test. But you can create multiple of these scripts, okay? For something else, let's say you wanna create your own custom script, right? Let's say I do uh, my script and then this can be just ls. It could be anything, right? But since these, this is a special name, it's not start, or test, the way to run this is a little different, right? So you do npm my script and this is gonna fail. It says, I don't know what that is. However, if you run npm run my script, it is gonna execute the command over here. Okay, so notice the slight difference here. With start and test, I just had to run npm start and npm test. You can create custom aliases, you can create custom scripts, you can give it whatever name you want, but if it's not one of these special names, you're gonna have to say npm run, and then the name of the target, okay? You can create as many of those as you need here. So this right away is giving you a lot of value, even without using npm for package management, 
right? You can create these custom scripts, which kind of encompass all the typical developer needs for your project. Somebody gets this project, they need to do some things, right? Maybe acceptance testing, or maybe checking for code quality, or whatever else. You can create all those custom scripts over here and have it available. If it's start or test, you just run npm start or npm. If there's anything else, like let's say code quality, and you have a bunch of commands to run code quality, do not execute it. You say npm run, and then the name of that script, here it happens to be code quality, and then it is going to run that particular set of commands, right? One way of consolidating and kind of extracting that metadata out into one file, which is package.json. A lot of projects, a lot of programming environments have this kind of like a project descriptor, okay? Some of them have XML files, some of them have JSON files, YAML files, with node packages, with node projects, this is a project descriptor. It is packaged or JSON. All right, so that's using NPM to create a new project. But this isn't where the true power of NPM lies. The true power of NPM lies in downloading dependencies and having it available in your project, okay? Let's take the example of, let's say, moment.js, okay? This is a time zone utility. You wanna be able to look up time zones based on what the current time is, okay? And look up the times at different time zones. So a really good date and time utility in JavaScript is called moment.js. So we're gonna be downloading the moment.js library into our project in the next tutorial using NPM, and we're gonna require it and use it in our code by using some of the structures we already discussed about in this course. So let's take a look at that in the next tutorial.